excellencies, the senior officials representing Pacific uh, member states, Pacific Island Maritime Boundary Consortium partners, uh, SPC colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a pleasure following the progress of this dialogue over the past two days. A large part of this is because of the significant progress achieved, as well as the successful collaboration between all the parties involved in this work. After all, who doesn't find pleasure in a good story? It's indeed inspiring to hear about the years of sustained effort on the part of individuals, teams, and regional partners to fulfill the vision of a secure blue Pacific continent. A testament to the fact that when like-minded people who are passionate and committed about a particular course come together, the only outcome is progress in the right direction. One of the highlights of the meeting for me was the awards ceremony yesterday. As Pacific peoples, we often stress the service components of our work, but it is also important to get recognition of the good work our colleagues do. And of course, recognition from your peers is the highest accolade and something we should continue to embrace. <clears throat> As our DG alluded to yesterday, so often in development, we focus on the outcomes, on the deliverables, the hospitals built, the policies enacted, the SDGs achieved or not achieved, the tangible changes. But in so doing, we mustn't forget it is the people who drive these changes, the influences, the hustlers, the quiet, in some occasions, not so quiet, but determined forces between the scenes. In committing to something larger than themselves, these individual uh, lives are forever changed. And that is something we still not have found a way to measure. So congratulations again to our champions and leaders who were recognized yesterday. The progress in the work so far has been significant. If I can highlight one area in particular in treaties on shared boundaries. To have 35 out of 48 or 73% sorted is no small feat. I understand of the remaining boundaries, there are at least seven low hanging fruit, so to speak. And we look forward to working with some of you to get this across the line over the short medium term. It's very encouraging to hear Samoa uh, come out and commit to this. And I look forward to continuing to work with my own country of Tonga to progress some of their boundaries as well. We're quietly confident that we do not have to wait for another 20 years to report back on significant progress on this issue. So watch this space. Having said that, we recognize that some of the remaining treaties is, are the most challenging. Settling some of these boundaries may require innovative negotiation approaches and diplomatic agility. Apart from the 13 outstanding treaties, there are also a number of low hanging fruit we are working on with countries to ratify and enter their treaties into force and publish these with Andualos. Dotting all these I's and crossing the T's is also not a small task, but it is an important one to ensure security of maritime zones. On more global issues and reflecting on the mixed bag of outcomes from last week's COP26 meeting in Glasgow, we can take some solace that ocean action is now form, form, firmly embedded in COP processes. But we also know that global action on climate change is not happening as fast as we need to ensure our way of life in the Pacific can continue. This is a sobering realization. And yet, in the face of climate change uncertainty, it becomes that much more critical that we focus our energies on those tangible actions within our control. And defining and delimiting our maritime zones under UNCLOS is within our grasp. This is our blue Pacific, our ocean. In the words of the late Epeli Hauofa, we are the ocean. Let us work together to secure our ocean space, our fisheries, our livelihoods, our children's birthright for generations to come. As you have no doubt heard throughout this dialogue, SPC and the consortium of partners are committed to support countries in this work. While there is much to celebrate, now is not the time to sit back and relax, but to roll up our sleeves and finish the job. We are here to help build the capacity and support the next generation of champions who will take the baton and see these critical actions through to the finish. 
We thank you for all your kind words for the work that the team does. But let me say, our team really enjoys what they do. Nothing better than to be doing what you enjoy and to be thanked for it by our members, while not necessary, is much appreciated. In closing, I'd like to recognize the broader team that has made this work possible. From the consortium of partners across Pacific agencies, including the Pacific Island Forum Secretariat, the Office of the Pacific Ocean Commissioner, and the Forum Fisheries Agency. To our regional experts at Geoscience Australia, University of Sydney, and the Commonwealth Secretariat and GRID Arundel, and donors, including the Government of Australia, the Government of New Zealand, the Government of Papua New Guinea, Government of the United Kingdom through the British High Commission in Suva, and the European Union and Sweden through the Pacific European Union Maritime Program. We're very grateful for your support, your gifts and energies in contributing to this regional priority uh, effort. Most of all, I'd like to recognize those from across our member states who have taken up and driven this work at the national level. Where there have been successes, it is because of you and your dedication. We know that some of the work that remains is the most challenging, but we also know that with the people in this virtual room, we can make it happen. Malo Pito, Merci beaucoup, thank you, and Godspeed until we meet again.